This piece takes place in December of 1990. It's called Heaven's Tears. Mom was waked and buried after Christmas. That New Year's Eve, I went back to my mother's house on East 23rd Street in Brooklyn. East 23rd Street off of Avenue D was a promised land to my parents. It was their first real home after we moved in 1967 from the railroad flat apartment that we had on Midwood Street. It had 11 rooms, stained glass windows, parquet floors, and a garden in the front and the back. I had read in the New York Times that there was supposed to be a blue moon this night. It is named for the second full moon that occurs in the same calendar month. The paper also had explained that the expression once in a blue moon has come to mean only on rare occasions. As the midnight hour approached, I was sitting at my mother's favorite place, a sturdy chair with arms at the end of the dining room table. I had a window view of the back garden. It was a crystal clear night. The full silver moon was very visible through the barren branches of the old chestnut tree. The stars were like tears in the heavens. I could hear the beginnings of celebrations in the distance. I was about to turn away in despair, but I noticed something else in that night sky. It was the sky itself. It was a particular blue, a cobalt blue just like the color of the bottle of perfume that I remember <coughs> that my mother kept all by itself on the top of her bureau when we lived in the old neighborhood. My father worked two restaurant jobs to put food on his table for his children. We were going through 12 quarts of milk a day then. On rare occasions when he didn't have to work on a Saturday night, mom, dad might take mom to a movie on Flappish Avenue. She would splash herself with it, this luxury and its fragrance would remain in the air for quite a while after they left together. For the longest time I had thought that an evening in Paris must have been very expensive. My older sister Tony set me straight one day, oh it's the cheapest stuff at the five and ten. Somehow, some way, that thought brought me out of my melancholy mood. I started to sum up my mother's life in light of the intense experience of recent days. My mom had a father who became fond of drink and an uneducated mother. They took her out of high school. You'll get married and we'll have children. You work in the restaurant until you do. She married Stavros when they had less than $25 between them. They had seven children in quick succession. Mom had the courage to throw dirty dishwater on a group of toughs trying to shoot craps beneath our kitchen window on Midwood Street. She had the tenderness to place my feet that were frozen from playing football in the snow against her bare belly until they were warm again. She loved to dance. Yes, mom was sure, and even chunky, especially in the later years, but she was always so unbelievably graceful when dancing the Greek dances. My mother was certainly a person in her own right. I remember her zaniness of her doing bicycles on her back in her cotton pajamas to the instruction of Jack LaLanne on morning television. I remember the time I pretended I didn't know her. That is when she carried the lit resurrection candle in a lantern on the subway after Easter services. She had a secret vice of tucking away Milky Way candy bars in the freezer as a special treat when she needed a pickup. I can still see the glow in her eyes when she would often relate that during the Great Depression, some big Irishman from the local Democratic Party made sure that all the poor families in the neighborhood had a Thanksgiving dinner with all the trimmings. Mom liked to instill her principles in her kids. People judge you by the company you keep. I'm sure it was a favorite. When I returned home from Vietnam in 1970, I started to go to Brooklyn College at night. I took some liberal art classes and told her, Mom, I think that there are some courses you might enjoy. However, she needed a high school diploma to attend college. She took and passed 
the GED exam for high school on her first attempt. The family joke became that when I was small, she would take me to school. And now that I was big, I was taking her. She kept at it though. And I went to her cap and gown graduation. I know in my heart that one of her proudest accomplishments was to be elected the president of the church's Friends of the Poor Society. Now she could help others, especially children. I went outside to the back garden. I looked up at the cobalt blue night sky to the full moon and the twinkling stars. Something else about mom came to mind. Countless times as a little boy, as I'm sure little children do, I would ask her, Mom, who do you love the most? No matter how tired or preoccupied she may, might have been, her answer never wavered. I love all my children equally. One last time I gazed up at the eternal heavens before going back inside. God has given us many gifts, but none as precious as the bond between a mother and her children.